Hey guys, on this episode of Pro Tips with Mike, I'm gonna teach you how to hold a pistol. I know a lot of you hold pistols, but I'm gonna teach you how to hold a pistol like a pro. So here we go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about in holding a pistol correctly is the acquisition of grip. What I mean is the grip starts with the acquiring of the pistol in its holster or wherever it's at. What I mean is a lot of people think that, for example, this is an inside the waistband holster that we make at Philcraft Survival, that when I draw the pistol up, I grab the pistol and pull up on it. That's not grip. In fact, you have to acquire your grip on a pistol that way as you present it, which is not good, not bueno. So what we need to do is acquire and set our hand in position on the grip, which is the acquisition process of grip, so that when we pull it out of the holster, we are set up for success. That's the proper way to hold a pistol. So my hand goes down on the back of the back strap. I set my hand down by pushing down, and then I pull it out. So if this was on the nightstand, if it was in your center console, your glove box, your European man satchel, whatever you're into, the grip starts when you grab the pistol, not when you present it, not when you align it on target. If you're fixing it then, it's probably too late. The combination of stress and all the other environmental factors that you're dealing with are gonna lead to fail points along the way if you don't acquire a proper grip from the get-go. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about how to hold a pistol properly. Now it starts with your dominant hand. I happen to be right-handed. If you're lefty, just take the everything in reverse. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a special exception for you weirdos out there. Should I say that on, t on camera? It's okay, we'll go with that. Um, so there's always one on a range, one lefty on a range. It's like, gotta cater everything for you or I'll just use the majority and just, we'll do everything opposite. So I got my right hand here. I got a V notch on my right hand, got a V notch on the grip of the gun. A lot of manufacturers now are beveling this. Back in the day during USPSA and IDPA, they used to have 1911s with beaver tails. Well, that's more purchase. Now all of them are set like that in that grip angle. And also under the trigger guard, you see right here, there's a little indent that's meant for your hands. So V-notch and middle finger are primary, the first ways that you're gonna set a proper grip. And so when I'm holding the pistol here, I'm setting the position of the gun in my hand. Again, acquisition. It's not holding the gun, I'm gripping the gun. Okay, so no space here, no space here. The reason that's important is because two things happen when a gun goes boom, muzzle flip, muzzle rising, and recoil, gun going back to the rear. So I wanna prevent the muzzle um, from overly rising, so I don't want too much rise, and I don't want a lot of recoil. So if I let this gun, if I held the gun with a wrong grip and just went boom, the gun would go up and back. If I didn't have consistent grip with the V notch of my hand and my middle finger, then I would have inconsistency as the gun's cycling. Muzzle flip, recoil, setting. Boom, muzzle flip, recoil, setting in a different position, and then boom. So you get shots all over the place in accuracy and efficiency and speed, you know the deal. So V notch, middle finger, setting a proper grip. If you're doing this diagnostically, meaning by the numbers, you're taking each step at a time. We are not masters of advanced tactics in ninja school. We are masters of the basics. So V-notch, middle finger, push the gun, set it down into my grip properly, and now I'm set. The next thing is hinging at the elbow and doing this. I know it seems weird, but it's not. Don't flag your buddies, don't flag your head. I'm driving the gun down to establish what kind of set position I need in my wrist, in the ligaments of my wrist, because if you didn't pay attention to that, what it feels like and what it looks like, what you would do is this. In fact, the reason I added this to a diagnostic end grip is I saw a lot of students doing this when I told them to do that because they don't have the muscle memory in their wrist to be able to establish that proper grip because a lot of the recoil is managed in that wrist. Muzzle flip, recoil, and then you get a limp wrist. We don't like limp wristed people. We need to have stiff wrist. So stiff wrist, and now I know barrel in line with my arm and I'm not whipping it and that's the integrity I need to retain as I'm shooting. This is not national match competition, slow aim fire. This is a rapid engagement scenario in self-defense. So V-notch, middle finger, setting the grip down, hammer grip, ensuring I have a proper grip. 
That's enough to hold the, the pistol in my hand, but I'm not over gripping it. If you take your hand, squeeze it down, and then manipulate your trigger finger, it's real slow. But if you take your hand and just hold it in the grip, it's like a hammer grip. If you sling a hammer, you can make little minute um, changes in your hand to be able to hit the nail on the head. So if you just hold it and then do that, you'll be able to run your trigger finger fast. Two principles of winning a gunfight happen to be speed and accuracy. So it matters. Let's focus on the support hand. This happens to be my left hand. So support hand. After I did my diagnostic on my right hand, I moved the pistol out of the way. I want to sit it on its side so I could see all that beautiful real estate. I want to take my thumb and point it at the target without flagging my hand. And I want to open my hand, keeping my thumb flat. Mike, why would you do it that way? Well, because I want you to see and feel what right looks like and feels like. A lot of things that we that feel right because our hands are touching things aren't necessarily right. That's a, that's a life lesson that I teach often, but I wanna be able to see it applied and I wanna feel what that feels like. So I look at the frame of the gun and then I apply that grip on the side of the frame and then I upright the gun. So after I'm in this position, now I have proper real estate on the support side of the frame and the dominant side of the frame. Most of my grip comes from the support side of the frame because I'm vicing the top of the frame. And the action of muzzle flip and recoil, if I vice the bottom of the gun that doesn't move, like a bench rest, and the slide reciprocates, I'm maintaining the integrity of its position while it's cycling in its operation. So, thumb point at target, open hand, applying what right feels like, looks like, upright in the gun, and then pushing and pulling. This is part of the grip as well. When I push the gun, I want to throw hands quickly. There's no time that I'm going to go, this isn't national match. This is me driving the gun to the alignment of the target as rapidly as possible. And also, I want to lift my support elbow high on the gun because the ergonomics of my hand, if I did this with this elbow, I would pitch the gun. If I did it with this elbow, with my thumb aligned on the frame, I would just get more real estate and more friction on the gun. So I could do this. Right, so this elbow is slightly higher and locked in position. You notice as I'm presenting the gun on target, there's no changes in the position of my body, from my head, from my body. I wanna present it in the field of view between my eyes and the target, and that's simply what I'm doing, okay? So V-notch, middle finger, hammer grip. Turn the gun sideways, thumb point at target, open hand, keeping the thumb flat, and applying right, looks like, feels like, upright in the gun. Push, pull, push, pull. I know that's fast, but that's where I record this so you can rewind and watch this slow. But let me give you the way to practically apply this on a range yourself. It's about proximity of rounds and distance from each other on the target. Take a target, push it out seven yards, shoot five rounds, because it's a good indication of if you're sustaining the grip through the duration of the shots, and then assess your rounds on target. That's the best way to do it. Guys, I hope that helped. Pro Tips with Mike, Till next time, peace.